So, when is it decided that you wore your underwear more than once? You know, it's this, it's this weird preconceived notion that apparently there is a length of a time or there's an amount of time that it becomes too fucking much to wear the same pair of underwear in the same setting. Okay. Explain this to me then. When is it too much? Hmm? Is it you can only wear it for 16, 24 hour period? Or one time counts as one time you wear it, meaning as long as you keep it on. If I keep it on for five days straight, I still technically one time never took it off my ass. So tell me, how is that not considered the same? Underwear is supposed to be a personal choice since it is a personal garment. Um, because it's as personal of a clothing item as it gets because... Um, your most delicate prize you have as a man is under the underwear. And I'm not talking about the gooch. Okay. So what counts as it, huh? Is it when you get sweaty? Yeah, maybe. Maybe you go outside, go for a run, go play basketball for a day. Yeah, you should probably go home and fucking wash your underwear. Probably shouldn't. There's a reason why we change kids' underwear multiple times in a day. There's a reason why little babies have diapers. There's a reason why when you get older and older, you graduate to underwear. The little little undies, the one with the magic school bus. Choo-choo. Man, Miss Frass can fucking get it. Just saying. Have you ever actually heard that the magic school bus is really just supposed to be one big psychedelic trip? Just a side note. But I find it, so when is the underwear, when, what is considered one time? Say, so if you, because the notion online or in general is, eh, you're not supposed to wear the same pair of underwear more than once before washing them. Like, do you think I shit my fucking underwear? Like, do you really think I'm going to walk around with brown streaks in my hands? I'm sure it happens. Not here to deny that. But if I want to air, if I want to wear it till my booty starts itching, then let me wear it till my booty starts itching. A lot of you girls want to experiment with it anyways. You know, you want a man to prime it up like a lawnmower? (laughs) Yeah, most of y'all girls have never used a lawnmower. They'd rather make sure the oil's all good in there, clean, safe to use. Um, I don't know if y'all know, but when you start playing with the booty hole, um, you don't just uh, fist it in. The iron fist. Man of the iron fist. No, no, no. Be gentle. Okay? I would only assume. Now, if you want to go down that lane, then go down that lane. But don't tell me how to wear my fucking underwear. If you girls are in the ass play, let your man wear his underwear until he gets a little iffy. So at least he could start, he may start, you know, fingering. And he first it starts in the crease when your butt itches. And then like when it really starts itching, you're like, what the fuck? And then you go to the bathroom, you start wiping deep up in there with some double ply tissue. I hope you have double ply if you're really digging deep. You don't want to go cheap on that. All right, we'll just say he gets the angel soft. So he's going pretty deep in and it's not really that soft. That he's going and he starts like, you know, digging up there, you know, finding the... In the insurmountable, always talked about G-spot, right? So, you girls that are into dudes that want things up their butthole, you should kind of be attracted to that, those type of men. You should kind of look for that. It should be like a quality trait. Oh, he's nice. He's kind. He's a gentleman. Oh, and he's worn the same fruit of the loom for the past three and a half days. Major turn on. I know what's about to go down, or in, or out, or in and out. Maybe get a burger after. Who knows? Double cheese, double whip, double cream, double, ooh, in between them buns. But you know what? But no. 
It's disgusting. But a lot of y'all girls are into disgusting shit. Now let me tell you why it's different for a woman. Oh, we about to get a little sexist. You know what? A little toxicity never hurt no one. A little sexism. It's a time and a place. There's a lot of a lot of people uh, secretly like toxicity. Just as Britney Spears. Mm. Mine cause you're toxic. That's why her dad handles all of her money. A lot of y'all toxic girls, um, honestly are no different. And you know what's funny? This whole free Britney shit. Um, look, man. Do I think that a grown woman should have her dad have full control of her real estate, her equity, everything? No. But I'm saying, if this man has that much control of it at this point of her life, because she's, what, in her mid-30s, I'm assuming, at this point? <laughs> There's probably a reason, you know? Go look at her mental breakdown like 10, 12 years ago. Whatever. People have mental breakdowns. Pretty normal. People shave their head. Not that abnormal. I've shaved my head. Not having a mental breakdown. But because I got tired of keeping up with my head. Maybe she's going through the same thing. Different life. Different price. Whatever. But if someone is legally in charge by the courts. Maybe they know some sh- they don't. Maybe they know she doesn't know how to do things. Now, I would say she doesn't know how to take care of her money at this point of her life, or at least have common life skills. That is a failure of parenting. But, hey, I'm not a parent. Who am I to judge? Because you know what? People that aren't something, they're not allowed to look from afar and have an objective point of view and really look at something for what it is. That's just not right. Because apparently you have to be a mother of three or a father of five to understand what's right and what's wrong with children. But whatever. What do I know? Anyways, back to digging up your booty hole. Okay. If you, if you want to know, see, if you, if your man is a hundred percent straight, right? There's no question abilities. There's nothing questionable that would make you assume that he would even be, um, experimental. As the young kids would say. Let them, you know, when you guys like go in your little retreat, tell them, you know what, honey, a secret uh, turn on for me has always been a man that doesn't change his underwear for six days. Oh, yeah. If he really loves you, of course he's going to do it. We do anything for pussy. And even when you guys fuck. You pull the underwear down, just don't let it come off the ankles. Because once it comes off the ankles, it doesn't count. That's the whole point of this. Of course, the only exceptions that underwear goes below the belt, the chastity, the charity belt, the charity stripe, because there's nothing but free throws down there, is when you are taking the shit, or if you're pulling your underwear down to... You know, get uh, someone to get under and wear inside of them down, if you get what I'm saying. Which, you should get what I'm saying, because I already prefaced that someone, you're going to have sex with them, okay? So, go on a little retreat, go to the Bahamas, get one of those sandal resorts, those white sandy beaches, even though I doubt they're really white and sandy. It's probably where the drug lords are, but hey, nice view, beautiful white water. Hey, what's that? That's Epstein's Island. Oh, huh. That's a shame. Good thing our kids are at home. Babysitting. Woo! Bryce. So, you take them on a resort, right? Keep the underwear on. Tell them it turns you on. Tell them if he keeps it on, you will do something for him that no woman has ever done for him. Ever. But don't tell him what it is. But guarantee that it's something that no girl has ever done with him. One, he might start getting scared, but hey, the build-up, the tension, the love, the lust, the fuck, ooh. <sighs> so, where's his Fruit of the Loom? Where's his Hanes? You know, where's them Glidden's? He wears them for those six-day period. 
Day number six comes. You know that booty hole is itching. Even if he keeps a clean ass, even if he hasn't done any exuberant activities, you guys have probably gone out to dinner a few times to, an, to a nice little gazebo at nighttime. The night wind breeze, you probably drank a little. You probably sweated down there when you were dancing one night doing a, it's electric. You know what else is electric? This chemistry. And you know what else is electric? The way I'm going to buzz you on that sixth day. Mm. I'm going to electrocute your veins. Make you feel alive, like the cable guy. Bzzz, alrighty. Day six comes, okay? He can't wait. You can tell he's been clenching. He's been clenching his cheeks when you guys have been waiting in line at the gift shop. Because, you know, you guys are traveling around the Aruba. I guess that's where you're at. Aruba, that's where the Santa Resort's at. Like, you know, where Natalie Holloway disappeared in 2006. Don't let that be you. But, hey, maybe she had a man that she trusted and a man with an itchy butt who's always on edge. Maybe she wouldn't have gotten kidnapped. Just a thought. But anyways, so you are on day six. Let's just say you place a time, 10 o'clock tonight, honey. You could take him off. And then we're off to the races like Danica Patrick, except I won't leave you. So, it's 10 o'clock. Get back to your room. A little nice gazebo that you paid for. Because you know he's a high-value man. Flew you out there. He's finally, oh, finally, yes, I pulled out my underwear. And he's like, oh my god, my crack is fucking itching. It feels like a bunch of ants are down there. What the fuck? And you're like, oh, okay, hold on, before, hold on, I got some, you know, I, I got, you know, women always have the weirdest supplies that happen to fix any problem that, and, and it's funny, you guys don't have the things that may actually commonly happen, like, oh, man, I cut my elbow, oh, here, I got some rubbing alcohol and some band-aids, I got you, oh, man, I did in my head, it's like, don't worry, I got an acupuncture thing that could pull out your skin to stop it from swelling, no, you know what you guys got, you guys, like, Guy. You guys got pimple removers for no fucking reason. Oh, I get a pimple on my cheek. Oh my god, we can't, we can't go to the island shack with you having a little pimple on your cheek that no one notices except me. Oh, but I have that for you. But, you know what you have? Some nice, nice sanitized plug. Nice sanitized plug. And then... You come in like, hey, sweetie, I know this looks a little weird, but this is just to take the itchy feeling out. Trust me, I won't look at you as gay or anything questionable. Don't worry, honey. And if he's not gay, of course he's going to be like, I ain't doing that gay shit. But then convince him like, well, if you don't do that, it's going to keep on itching. And then we can't have the promise, I promise you. But little did he know what your real promise is. So if he's like, well, whatever. Burn tell you better not tell no one. So he lays down his stomach first. You pull down the underwear while he's laying down his stomach. You pull it out, take it off the ankle. So now he officially has no underwear. His uh I guess you could say his use for underwear of um active status has officially ended. So pull off his underwear off. You you have your hemorrhoid cream thing. You have like some weird bath and body work shit you put in there. It stops the itching. I don't know what would work to fix the itching. We'll just say you put some anti-itching cream in there. How about that anti-itching cream? Why would you have anti-itching cream? I don't know. But you have it. Because like we talked about, you have the most random shit that doesn't fucking apply in any reasonable situation. Except when you're trying to eat or fuck your boyfriend's ass. Okay? So follow along here. So you put some, you put some of the anti itch cream, you dig deep in there. You see, he winces a little bit, but he doesn't tell you no. So at that point, you know, go all in. So you know what you do? Okay, honey, don't worry. Just let it lay there about five or ten minutes. Let it air dry. Just lay in your stomach and relax. And then after, we can have a little fun. But remember, you said five minutes. So that means you have a five-minute period to pretend you're doing something actually has medical reason to fix anti-itching in his booty hole. So what you do, you say, sweetie, I know it's going to feel weird, but don't worry. This is to help the air gasp out, you know? I don't know if you've ever done anal. Questionable noises. You let the air gasp out. So, 
You pull out your little anal plug. Get a little lube, whatever, you know, slides it in. Like you're sliding the first. What you don't need to slide the first in baseball. You watch baseball, you get the reference. It actually slows your momentum. Whatever. You used to play baseball. I get the reference. Whatever. So you're going to the crack. You're going home, right? Whereas right now, technically, you're going to first base. You're opening his cheeks. He's not really stopping you because you know what? You're a doctor in this situation. So you slightly put the little plug in. Maybe you just put your finger in. So we use my finger, prime it open. Then I got to stick something in there. Ugh. Oh, God. That BLT pizza. But anyways. So. You stick the plug in, right? You inch it in, inch it in. He starts wincing a bit, but. Then something you notice. He doesn't hate it. Then you know what probably goes to your head? I don't think this is his first time. Mmm. So all along, your boyfriend was gay. But the only way you would have found that out is if you let the man be a man and wear his underwear. Hmm? Or maybe he's not. You know what? Let's go back to the story. Let's just say he's not. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He's just playing along, right? But he knows this isn't part of the, at least he thinks this isn't part of the thing you promised him, right? But then, turn the lights out. Start putting the candles around, you know? Girls always put candles. Why would you put candles in a, why would you have like nine candles by the bed? If like one, if like two of those candles fall over, you know, if you're making a ruckus, if one of those candles falls over on the bed and then... You know what flame catches on to the bed sheets and shit? One, that's a heavy fine. You might burn down the place in two or three, I should say. You are fucked and you're going to be having the wrong type of fire sex, okay? You ain't Johnny Blaze. This ain't the Fantastic Four. You're not the Human Torch. Jesus fucking Christ. But no, you have his head smushed to the bed said, don't look surprised, like he's Cyclops, right? So with no mystique, you cause a storm, and you just start playing with that booty hole, huh? Start playing with it. You start twirling around there. Like it's a nice, uh, like someone stirring some jello pudding, like some jello chocolate pudding, right? Just stirring that bitch up, trying to get the thickness out. Maybe it's like some onion dip, because, you know, sometimes it get a little creamy back there. Depending on what you're doing. I digress. So, put your middle finger, maybe two fingers. If you fit three, you know something has been in there before. Just saying. So, you're playing around there. Maybe get a little chocolate nougat on the tip of your uh, fingernails. And by the way, if you just got your nose done, please don't put your acrylic fingers in his booty hole. Please don't. Be considerate. You don't know what chemicals they put on that shit. You don't want no spark. You don't want no sparkling booty hole inside of your man, do you? All right. So you're. So then you just. You know what? You just go for it. You stick the anal plug in there. The one you probably got. You either ordered or Adam Eve on a forty percent off discount off a podcast that you listen to. Forty percent off Adam and Eve when you type in Adam twenty. Blah blah blah. Or you just went to your nearby sex shop. Or you went to one of those travel stop sex shops, like Love. They never have the full supply, but there's always prostitutes outside. Because, you know, even though they're semi-trucks... By the way, why are they called semi-trucks when they're actually much fucking bigger than trucks that we actually drive around? But I digress. (sighs) So you stick the plug in his booty hole. Things start to expound. And at some point, you realize... He knows this isn't part of the treatment, but he's not going to tell you that. So you're playing this mind-fucking game. You're playing this mind-fucking game where even though you're in the window where you said this is just part of the treatment to get rid of your itch, you know it's not, and deep down he knows it's not, but he can play along with it and say it's for medical purposes. It's like when you get your colonoscopy. All men have to do it. Doesn't make you gay. It's for your health. But hey, I'm assuming it's uncomfortable. I'm assuming it makes you feel weird as a man. But you know what? You do it. 
So he uh plays along. So he's uh letting you do what you do. Letting it prime open. Like uh, Amazon. Except uh, no union here between you guys. No union at all. And you could not pay me 15 an hour to get a plug stuck in my ass. Just saying. But you could have probably got that off Amazon for like 40% off. Probably cheaper than Adam and Eve or wherever the fuck you got it. So the five minutes is up. You say, okay, that's the end of the treatment. Blah, blah, blah. Now it's time for the fun. And he's like, okay, cool. That was weird, but hey. I didn't wear this underwear for six days straight for just uh, the ambiance of Aruba. Okay. So, you guys are laying in bed. 10, 15 p.m. I would say Eastern. I don't know what fucking time. We'll just say 10, 15 p.m. in Aruba for lack of uh, better judgment. So, he uh, flips over on his... uh. Flips over, so basically his backside's now on the bed, and he's facing up to you. You get on top of him, and then you start making out with him, kissing him. You start whispering sweet everything's in his ear. Because the reason why I say sweet, the reason why I don't say sweet nothing's because, man, when you some of you girls whisper in our ears, hey, it's it's something, man. Some shit y'all be saying, it ain't nothing. Oh, it's something. And so I was, hey, you know, I've always wanted to role play doctor. Uh, he's like, wow, you made me wait six days to role play fucking doctor. One of the like top three most used role plays in sexual fantasies. Like, really? This way you fuck? He's like, it's like, no, 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 this isn't the thing. But, you know, I just kind of want to ease into what I'm doing, right? So then he's like, oh, whatever. So you pretend to take his temperature. You know, you pretend to be seductive, pinching his nipples, saying, do you have psoriasis? Of course he says, no. You start, you know, flicking, like, flicking with your fingernails. Start seeing, like, little marks you could cause on his stomach, you know. See what type of pain tolerance he has, right? Of course he has very, very medium pain tolerance. Not too high, not too low. So then you pull out the plug. Say, okay, lift your legs up. So you like lift his two legs up like you're doing a deep stretch. And then you just shove that plug up his ass. Missionary. You just shove it up there. No ease, because you've already eased in with the lube. It's already open, man. Open sesame. No Houdini necessary. David Blaine, except everything's in plain view. There's uh, no illusion here. You stick the plug in. A little gasp. A little moan. And then you realize he's exactly what you want all along. He likes booty play. And the only reason why you found out is because you let a man decide how long he wanted to wear his fucking underwear. No brown streaks. No more. And then he probably shit all over the bed because, you know, he probably ate a lot that night. He didn't know you were going to do that. So he probably shit at the bed. Whatever. But the moral of the story is that's why you let people decide. You can find a lot about someone. Even if stuff they didn't want you to know about. And then you'll probably leave him. Because you didn't know he was like already into that shit. You want to be his first. But you found out you weren't. And even though you had the same intention as before. For some reason someone else playing with it before. Makes you feel more insecure. Which is kind of ironic. The next thing you know. You leave him. And you never experiment again. Because he fucked that up for you. Now also, with that all being said, what is the proper way to wash our body? Is it is it sponges? Is it the little um squeezy puffs? The little poofs, as they say. The little one dollar ones you could get or a couple dollars you could get by the condom section at Walmart. 
by the shampoo, hmm, by the dyeing hair, just for men gray. It's like, you're 24. What do you mean just for men gray? <laughs> or is it okay to use your hands? I don't know. I've tried them all. Really? Just depends on the day. Depends on the soap. But to be shamed for the way that you wash your body, if I smell the fucking same no matter what, why the fuck does it matter? We have this culture where we want people to, we want to control people on how they do things because in our mind, this is what's right and wrong. No, it's fucking not. You should, your lifestyle and shit you do is adjusted by whatever the fuck you do. Who are you to tell me to not use Old Spice? I love Old Spice. Nothing's better than Old Spice on a poof. I don't care if it looks feminine. I love it. It has a nice spread. It's like it's like a it's like a Super Bowl party. A nice spread of like the cheese, crackers, pepperoni, salami, pastrami, kakami, onion dip, celery that no one asked for, wingstop, boneless wings, Tyson wings, public tray of subs, like. You get a nice even spread. Even Steven, Shia LaBeouf, Nymphomaniac. Aren't we all? Probably deep down inside. And those who aren't, the only reason why you're not is just because you haven't got enough sex yet. If you just got enough sex, trust me, you would want it more. You don't have to keep telling yourself that uh, sex is overrated. I guess you really haven't had sex, have you? Trust me, it's not overrated. There's consequences and ramifications, but it is not overrated by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe for girls, but for guys, we always win. Win win, baby. We're like the Raiders. Win win, baby. What it do, baby? Kawhi, hey, shut down defense. Always shut down defense by not satisfying a lady. You can never be mad at me. I already told you. God. You know. It's amazing how things in life just fall together. Like a like a nice game of Jenga. Things just jungle together. Things bungle and sungle. And next thing you know, oh man, Lions don't make the playoffs again. Go Detroit. Work hard. Ford City. But we're not going to pay. Hmm. We don't have a union. But we do. But we don't pay them. Eight mile. Woo! I've never understood that line. Cram both. Cramp, what's that line in, in 8 Mile? He's like, I know something about you. You went to Cranbrook. That's a private school. I'm assuming that's a private school in uh, the Detroit uh, metropolitan area. Actually, that reminds me. Like, isn't Phineas and Ferb in the... Isn't that in Detroit? Barry the Platypus? Oh my God, is that Barry the Platypus? Nah, I don't think that's Detroit. But it was on Disney. And you know what's um up uh, you know what's uh, below a knee? This knee. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie. I saw that on Instagram. I can't take that joke. But you know what joke I can take? V neck sweaters, which I've already said twice in my podcast. I realized that today. I said the opening of my previous podcast. But hey, you know what? Pussy eaters probably do wear V necks. Just saying. Why? I mean, I think it explains itself. V-necks are typically with less feminine men. And feminine men eat pussy. I eat pussy. Not gonna lie to you. I don't think I'm that feminine. But hey, I eat pussy. Does eating pussy make you a pussy? DJ Khaled sure seems to think so. Do you really, for example, do you really think Drake eats pussy? I don't think so. DJ Khaled doesn't even believe uh, his face should be near 20 feet of a pussy. Like... He believes, like, basically, like, when he talks about a woman and his wife, he's basically like, you know, if you can fuck me from over there, shit, you should only come over here. You can't really touch my skin. My thighs shouldn't touch your thighs, even though my thighs are about the size of half your body. But, hey, I'm the one. By the way, last album, shitty as fuck. <sighs> I have heard a couple snippets of the Migos album, though. Um, shit's pretty fire. And I'm not even gonna lie and say I'm a big-ass Migos fan. I always felt like a lot of their music sounded the same. It was just mainly ad-libs, a few cool lines, a lot of it was the ambiance and the flow. But, you know, over time, as I listen more, like, man, they're actually pretty fucking good. 
And then this last album, like, there's actually some actual, like, songs and music. I'm like, whoa. Taking off is a taking off. And uh, Offset is uh, not offsetting his rhymes. He's actually doing fucking great. It's actually, I'm not going to lie, pretty surprise. Pretty, it was a delicate surprise. You know who's really an underrated rapper in the um, rap game? Jack Harlow. Not going to lie. He is what's popping, and I don't mean that because it's the most popular song. Um, you should all listen to the Sweet Action album. He has a song called Hey Big Head. And I would continue to sing the lyrics, but I'm terrible at remembering lyrics. But he has songs like Hey Big Head, Smells Like Incense. That's one song. He just has a lot of good songs on there. And uh, the next album he did, That's All They Say or whatever, where it's like a more full album. Has some features on there. There's a couple bangers on there. Not gonna lie. He has a smooth flow. Really, really smooth flow. Speaking of smooth flows, have you ever gone uh have you ever gone swimming in a pool that uh you know hasn't been cleaned? It's like a nice uh one time I went over to a friend's house, right? It was in the neighborhood, I was about ten or eleven years old. Um we had a neighborhood across the street, or not neighborhood. We had a neighbor across the street, right? Kind of a scary house. We had like a pool in his backyard. One day after school, came home, always just walked outside and just started doing shit. So I was riding my bike around the neighborhood, stopped by his house, no one was home. So even I was wearing shorts and shit, jumped over the fence, jumped in their pool, right? No harm, no foul. Six feet deep pool, I'm probably like five, four, five, five, pretty young fella. Probably not even that tall. Give myself a lot of credit. I always uh, add more numbers to the metrics, if you get what I'm trying to say. Actually, I thought of something earlier. Because since I did do a podcast, um, actually earlier today, on episode 6, I went pretty deep in on Jada Pinkett and her whole uh, steam and vagina little thing. And I realized I talked for, I think I talked about this situation for 20, for about 26 minutes or so. And, um, I broke my own rule because I always, I talked about it for 26 minutes and I always have a rule to myself and I always hold it to men. Men should never in one sitting, I should say that in one sitting, you should never talk about pussy longer than you last in it. And, uh, let's just say I went way over the mark on that one. Way over. Like, um... I should, like, refund, like, half the podcast. Like, you know, people were trying to get for the Mayweather and Logan Paul fight. Looking back, not the most exciting fight. But, hey, you know what? You guys want to fucking pay for it and not illegally stream it like the rest of us or find a YouTuber that's live streaming it with a fake title that says, Look at me, Minecraft. And then you click on it and it's some dude holding a, holding his uh, phone deep into the sofa at enough distance where it doesn't uh, copyright where YouTube doesn't get the copyright notice because it audio and stuff <sighs> to watch it also on TV. Yeah, you're going to deal with extra noise, not great quality, but you still see the fucking fight and not waste your money. I mean, come on, get on the program, fellas. It's not that difficult. Stop following the law. Stop thinking I'm always going to do the right thing. Never do anything illegal. Yeah. Okay. Go fuck yourself. You piece of fucking shit. Uh, I never do wrong. Actually, you do a lot of wrong. By trying not to do wrong, you're doing more wrong. Because you're not being genuine, you piece of shit. Be genuine. Be a piece of shit. By being a piece of shit, you're less of a piece of shit. And when you're not a piece of shit, to me, you look like a fucking piece of shit. Ironic. You're like a big fucking streak of my underwear. There's nothing but itch. Feels a little bit. There's nothing worse than when you have a wet fart. And, uh... It's a 50-50 chance of whether it was just a wet fart. And the air condenses in your underwear. And um, let's say you're driving. You're sitting in your car. And you're driving home. It happens. And you're like, fuck. So you're literally waiting three minutes away. It's almost like you're crossing your fingers. Like you're waiting for, you know, the ambulance to show up on time. So your dog doesn't die. And then... You get home, 
you uh, walk up gingerly up to your apartment complex, walk in, take a first left, take a, pull down your pants and you pull down your pants and you pull down your underwear halfway. You look at it. You may take a feel at your own risk or you may look at it and you're like, whoo, dodge a bullet. I like, ah, shit. I do laundry for no fucking reason. There's nothing worse than doing emergency impromptu laundry. Like when you plan your laundry and you got a pile of clothes, no fucking big deal. You put it all in at once, put it in the dryer, it's all done. Conveniency. But when you have like, when you do like a couple days of working out and you have like three pairs, you have like three pairs of sweaty shirts, four pairs of shorts, five pairs of underwear you use, a couple different pairs of socks, you know. Then, like, you're like, fuck, I can't just have these stink up my room. I could, but I'm not that much of a fucking animal, regardless of what you think by now. Then you have to put nine things in a fucking washer. You have to waste all that fucking water for nine pieces of clothing instead of the 48 that you typically would put in there. I mean, I think it's just genuine. Um, It's all about convenience. You don't want to waste big machinery to do small problems. You don't go. You don't go buy a bobcat to dig your dead cat's grave, do you? No, doesn't make any fucking sense now, does it? <sighs> Speaking of not making sense, so I actually read this story. This guy dropped eighty thousand pennies as his last payment towards child support. That's a lot of sense. I forgot what the conversion, I think, alright, 80,000 pennies, I believe that's $800, it sounds about right for a child support, apparently it was like the child's last, he was turned 18, so his last payment he was responsible for, and I guess him and his wife are strange, whatever, so this man, he bought, like, he attached, I forgot what he did, he, he bought like a little... He basically bought like a little U-Haul thing, but it wasn't a U-Haul. I don't know, but he had, he attached it to the back of his pickup truck, attached it to the hitch and everything. So he pulled up in front of his wife's front yard, backs up a little, and they catches it on the video security. She comes out or whatever. This man drops eighty thousand pennies in this woman's front yard. Here's the thing, man. I understand child support payments must be the fucking worst. I really do. And hey, I know as men, we will always defend men that we feel like who have been taken advantage of our system. Men who have always done the right thing being there, but somehow women are taking advantage of them because of how the system is built. So this man definitely felt wrong by his wife. Here's the thing, though. The ex look and here's oh Clint you're not a parent you don't understand here's what I do understand it's not a great example for your kid it's your last payment you couldn't swallow your pride because you wanted to prove a point when you're probably like thirty nine or forty years old like you really think you're really you're really gonna look back in your life and be like man I'm really glad I did that in front of my kid. Because then you made a whole spectacle about something that's predominantly for the kid, even if she probably doesn't use most of it. But we'll get the benefit of the doubt and say she mostly does. <sighs> Regardless, it, it's almost like you're being childish towards a child's mother. Even with all the bullshit she's probably done to you. Even though she probably cheated on you. Even though she probably fucked you over. But, like, at that point, it's your last payment. It's about your kid. You're really going to make your kid, like, be like, oh. Because the way you made it, it's like, hey, here's my last payment. I never want nothing to do with y'all again. Fuck y'all. Now, unless you don't really want a relationship, maybe your kid doesn't think. But uh, I don't think that's really a good example. Just me. And I know it's not towards the kid. It's nothing personal towards the kid. But that's not how the kids are going to look at it. But hey, man, that's a that's a lot of bang for your buck. It's a lot of Abraham Lincolns. It's a lot of 16s. That's 16th president reference. But, you know, I don't know about Abraham Lincolnism. You know, he's 
gone down to history like he's proclaimed, at least what we are taught in American schools. He's this, he was the first person to free slaves. And he's like, yeah, look. If you really, like, look at it, he didn't really free free slaves. He kind of like, hey, slavery's bad. And I really don't like it if you have them, but... Hey, I I can't really stop you. But just so you know, I look down on you. Like, could you imagine if he goes to one of those, like, like on Django Unchained, if you've seen the movie, where they go on those plantations where it's like Jamie Foxx and the other guy, and they go there, and all, like, the, when all the slaves were working and everything. And he's just sitting there telling him, hey, I think what is being done to you is really wrong. And if it were up to me, even as the president, when I could make it fully exempt from people having slaves, I think what's happening is wrong. Hey, keep up the hard work. It will pay off. That's really what he did. Not to get too serious. And I know I put in a simpler term and it sounds like I'm joking, but I'm really not. And look, I understand context of history. You got to understand for that time, that was revolutionary. It's like, yeah. It's like, it's like putting your ankles in the water. But like, you know, you put your ankles in the water at like one, at like the mall and shit where they have the little Chinese fish, Asian fish by your feet, which is probably one reason why we got Corona, whatever. Actually, speaking of real shit. So I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast other day or yesterday or today god damn all the days seem the same i don't even know the fucking difference anymore so i'm listening and they actually um talked about how they were they were talking about how they they were not debating but they were discussing the conflict of interest or is it really necessary for us to bring things into a safe laboratory and study it like bring disease into a safe laboratory and then like stuff like covid for example study in a laboratory so we know how to handle it if an outbreak were to happen it's kind of what happened in these labs and shit so apparently there was this one where they uh there's this thing running around with mouse called mouse pox where a hundred percent of mouses that get this virus or this disease die. Could you imagine if there's a disease where if a hundred percent of humans it died? Now one thing they have it's only gone the mouses and shit, right? Could you imagine if we were to have as human race a disease where a hundred percent it would kill us? They did a hundred percent of mice it has interacted with this fucking thing called mouse pox. We have chicken pox that don't fucking kill no one. It just makes you look like a fucking like. Well, I don't even know. I'm not lie. I really struggle for comparison. Oh yeah, that's right. Fucking uh, the kid off Home Alone. What's the kid? What's the kid off Home Alone? Kevin McAllister in the first one. The uh, do the freaking redhead with the pimples on his face eating the fucking pizza that's choking on it whatever anyone seen home alone you know who i'm referring to is it frank no not frank frank's the old guy anyway oh buzz fucking buzz yes chicken pox looks like buzz yeah it kind of looks like buzz light you're in the face too ugly toyish and uh always home alone with the kids but whatever so could you imagine if we had a disease where 100%? It's imagine fuck diseases. Anything where if it touched 100% of people, it affected them in any type of way. We interact with germs every fucking day. When you're playing with your boyfriend's booty hole, you don't think germs are being spread? Come on. We are interacting with germs every fucking day. And 99.9% of the time, our body feels no different. We don't even get sick for half a second because of it. Because we have built an immune system over time. 
human immune systems are stronger than we really like to give it credit for. But mouses are fucking little bitches. But when we see one of those things crawling, we get scared as fuck. Now, I don't remember if they said this mouse pox thing can transfer to human beings. I'm not going to lie. I'm not 100% sure. But, I do have one solution. I think it would... I do think I have a cure for the uh, mouses from this mouse pox. All we have to do is go in our mouse guitars. It's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Come inside and don't matter. It's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Hot dog. Now, you think I'm joking. Now you think, oh... We're going to talk about Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, mouses, mouse pox, mouse tools will fix all your fucking problems. I'm sure you guys have seen videos or snippets of things on The Simpsons. You know, like on The Fucking Simpsons. Um, you know, on, on The Simpsons, they've there'll be an episode from like 1999 or 2003. And they'll... Show something in the episode, and then in real life, the same thing resembles. Like, I think they did an episode in the late, mid to late 90s, where they emulated, basically, how 9-11 looked like. They've, all these conspiracies, like a long fucking list, you can't make this shit up. It's honestly kind of creepy. It's almost like they have this inside information, because they're part of the <clears throat> Illuminati, or Scientology, or the Devil's Worship. Or maybe... If you just put someone shows enough, humans will reenact that behavior and it'll probably happen. But there's some really particular ones. Like there was one where it showed Trump going down an elevator in an airport <clears throat> or a mall or something like that. And like they did side by side screenshot, played the videos. And like the way he was waving, same hand, same hairstyle, his wife on the same side of him, even though when they made that show, he didn't have a wife, or at least he didn't have that wife. And they had people taking pictures, certain way, questions were almost the same. Like, it's kind of fucking creepy. It makes you, the whole simulation theory is kind of crazy, right? I'm not going to be honest. I'm not that smart about the simulation theory. All I'm kind of picking up on it is, like, we live in two different worlds, but if you simulate the theory, you get to see everything ahead of time, then you come back, and you could change that, but not really. So you're basically time traveling, like, back to the future, except do we ever really come back to the future, or were you always in the future, but you just thought about the past because you're mentally already went through there, you just fast-forwarded? I don't know. I'm a dumbass, but here I am. Comedy. Sorry. Anyways, when I say that comedy thing, that's a a homage to Mark Norman, who says that in his shit. I'm not Mark Norman. He's way funnier. And that's his tagline. But I digress. So, yeah. Maybe Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Maybe, just maybe, that's a simulation theory for fixing... The mouse pox. Got a little mouse tools. By the way, you know, like, alright, so obviously there's a Space Jam with LeBron coming out. I'm not gonna lie, I have not seen a trailer for it. I'm I'm afraid to watch it and it be kind of disappointing. And I love LeBron, but I feel like they're gonna try to make it too advanced, too, as dumb as it's gonna sound, too cartoony. Yes, I feel like they're just... They're going to try to do too much with it. I'm afraid they're going to, like, take a character out they're not supposed to. Like, if they don't have a, the fucking skunk, the creepy, promiscuous skunk. <laughs> I forgot his fucking name, but he's basically, like, the ref and shit. I feel like him or Marvin the Martian they might take out because of, you know, cancel culture with shit about them. Because they kind of have questionable behaviors. It's like, alright, it's a fucking cartoon. It's a skunk. Like you really th- like you're really worried about your kid watching a skunk pick up another skunk, and he may say some like smooth, some smooth pickup lines, and you're afraid that your kid's gonna use that same pickup line at school. May help him. And then if it doesn't work out, he 
disconnects it from a cartoon so he doesn't feel like a person. Like, man, it worked for him. Why didn't it work for me? It's like, eh, it was a cartoon. He's like, ah, you're right. Fuck it. But I'm afraid they're going to make it too cartoony, right? Or maybe it'll be a slam dunk. (sighs) That was fucking awful. Even for my standards. But, you know, who knows? I think... I think when you watch it, I don't know, object, it'll probably be like a 6 out of 10. For pres- I think the whole Space Jam was like a 7 out of 10. Like, it's really hard. Like, my thing is like, who who's going to be the co-star NBA players, right? Like, because in the old one, you had, you had a good balance. You had Michael, obviously the main one. Then you had Charles Barkley, you had Patrick Ewing, you had Sean Bradley, you had, uh, um... Not Spud Webb, uh, Muggsy Bogues, and feeling like there's one more. Whatever, maybe there is, maybe there's not. But who's gonna be the co-stars? Like you gotta like the thing about when you listen to old, oh Patrick Ewing, did I mention Patrick Ewing? I don't know, but they had the elite players and they had like. A couple average players, but very like Muggsy Bogues was a really short player. So when you did the power thing, the powers thing meant more like, whoa, Muggsy's a little blue guy when he's the Monstars. But then when he's back in the gym and he gets his when he gets his powers back, and without his powers, he's really ass because he's short. All of them can't play without their powers. Who's gonna be that? They gotta have some elite players. Like maybe they'll have Anthony Davis. You know, I'm assuming he'll be in the money or be in the movie. He's on the Lakers. Do him a favor. Part of the same, uh, part of the same um, agency. I'm trying to think of a comparison. I think they need to have Chris Paul. I hope they have Chris Paul because one, he could be like the point guard shooting guard, and just see him in front of a screen. See him in the State Farm commercials. Um, the dude is uh, assisting a lot of lines in there. Okay, like. And since he's on fire from the mid range, if you see him sucking on the court from the mid range, you know he has lost his powers. Okay. And maybe they'll have like a Chris Paul. Um, let's see. Maybe you gotta have not that keep it too much in the Suns. Maybe you'll have like a Donovan Mitchell. And then you gotta have like a guy who's not really good, but he's like insanely tall. Oh, Boban Marjanovic, the seven foot five dude who is like Always happy. Him and Tobias have this weird relationship where they're like the long distance friends in the middle of the cornfields of sound with the wind type of thing. Like it's kind of cool, kind of cheesy, but hey, maybe they'll both be in the movie. Are they going to be called the Monstars? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stop there for today. Um, speaking of mouse, actually, I'm not going to stop speaking of mouse. Um, why do we call? Because I'm literally looking at mine right now. I have a wireless one where I hook into my laptop and then I print the home button. It's amazing how it just works. Why do we call the thing we use for the computer? You know, the little clicky thing we put in our hand. Why do we call it a mouse? Never understood that. Is it because it's kind of in the shape of one? I think mouses are typically a little bigger, but hey, I guess I'm not gonna nitpick. I feel like there's gotta be a reason though. I don't know. Maybe I'll do some research on that one. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. I don't even know what to call this episode. I literally just fucking ran, no preparation. Probably the smoothest episode of all. Just showered, wearing. Shitty pants, I think it's the holes in the jeans. I think because I'm wearing jeans and I just showered and a tank top because I'm a champion. Because that's the brand of the tank top I'm wearing. Champion. But yeah. Um, yeah, I guess uh, go follow my Instagram on IG if you've made it this far. Go um, follow my Snapchat at ClintNelson20. You want to send a couple nudes or maybe uh, receive some in return. Or if you just want to exchange uh, networking information. It's like, first of all, for you people on like Instagram talking about, 
all I want to do is make money, network, and make a business, and have great sex, meet the love of my life, no drama, just someone that loves me for me, and doesn't control me, and makes me feel more of me, and lets me run my business, but doesn't want kids, but wants to have all unprotected sex, but we just don't have kids, it's like, what? I just want to build with someone. It's like, do you really want to build with someone? Do you know what building looks like? Building is not cool. It's not fun. Oh, you want to build with someone? They built most of the equity, and then you never felt like you built actually something? You never actually felt like you did something? Is that what you really want? Okay. I think it's weird, like, we... On... It gets really tedious to watch on like the Instagram and really anything. I say Instagram because that's like 90% where I see it. But of course you can find a YouTube, internet, whatever the fuck. Is this whole like. If you, uh, if you ain't. Uh, if you ain't making me money. You're costing me money. It's like. Or I literally am doing nothing for you. Or to you. I am literally not costing you any money you can't make. You choose to work 50 hours in a week. Do the math of how many fucking hours are in a week. There's f- if you work 50 hours a week, you have worked two days in a week, essentially. 48 hours in two days. You've worked, f- you've worked two days plus two hours. That means you have four hours and 20... You have four days and 22 hours... That you have made a choice to not do anything else. Sounds like a you problem. I understand sleep. Okay. Let's add sleep. Okay. Let's let's say you get eight hours of sleep. We'll be generous. Eight times seven, 56. Okay. 56 hours, even though you don't really need eight hours unless you're actually exercising, moving shit, doing shit, which most of us aren't really doing shit. We, uh, eat a lot of bad food and we're always tired so then in between times we do work we're more tired and we're not as productive as we could be whatever so you were still choosing what 8 8 16 24 32 40 40 hours plus 50 is 90 so that's 4 day only a little about 4 days of your week 4 out of the 7 days of your week is consumed by the hours you are working at work and sleep. That means you literally have three days of total productivity in a week that you choose to either apply or you don't. So no, if someone's not making you money, they're not necessarily a problem because it's not someone else's accountability or responsibility or obligation to teach you how to work more. Or how to do something to make more money. If you don't value your time, why the fuck should I? Not my fucking problem. You don't have enough money? Fine. I get it. Just don't sit here talking about how you don't have fucking time. You do have time. You just choose to use your time differently. Wow, this became one of those unasked, unwarranted wisdom things. I really wasn't even trying to do it. But that's what this turned into. You have time, you just choose to do it differently, which is fine. You have every right to do what you want with your time. Just don't bitch about when there's things in your life that could have been used your time better, but you chose to do other things, and you got to accept what comes, with, what comes with those things when you don't apply your time in the way that maybe you should. Apply what matters to you, apply your time to that, and guess what? You'll either be happy with what you have, you will accept what you have, or shut the fuck up. And that is my episode for today. Remember, go follow Alpha B on IG. Go subscribe to the YouTube for daily shit. Often beats. And remember, you can find me on Apple Podcasts. You can find sometimes audio on YouTube. And remember the follow on Spotify. So you don't miss an episode. This is one of those random where I just talk and shit. And it felt fucking great to get some shit off my chest. Remember, 
play with your boyfriend's booty hole. You get what's coming, okay? And so does he, okay? Have a great night. And remember, suck some titties, my fellas. Ooh.